the come up new york let's talk about it ain't it obvious I just got the check for depositing. 750 for the sound wave to get it processed. Won't stop to that shit. Weighing down my pockets. My main things to my main thing. She a blossom. When she ease the pain with the brain. She a doctor. She open up dinner thing. Thicker than the plot gets. Swear that shit is awesome. Sight for the optics. Young nigga on top. Nike's all I'm rocking. So that all they see is checks from where the head to where the socks fit. No logo on the bifocal. Flicking old road strips. Won't even show my face until all the shows. But eat the cash in advance. Leave them all social. I'm the guy they chosen. Rise up like the Rosen. Put them on a poster. All the way up in the sky where the stars posted Sip it on that rose, I put it down on coasters Stack francs from the waves till I own the ocean More praises for the sayings, let it all soak in They like, hey, that shit is flame, bitch, I know I rode They going tight, dumb Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel This is Abby with Abby Reviews And this is gonna be my review for the Come Up New York Season 3, Episode 5, Drinks and Links Okay, so this whole episode <sighs> It's just a ball of confusion. Okay, so let's start. We did the what happened last week, blah, 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 blah. So we get to this episode and Ken is having some type of event called Drinks and Links where they they just meet up to have drinks. Um, So Justin arrives at this, it's an Indian restaurant. Justin arrives with his, the whole, his whole chest out. It looks unsanitary. Where's your real shirt? Um, Mitch then arrives. Um, Mitch arrives to uh, the restaurant and they sit down and they have a conversation. Mitch uh, big, is the bigger person and apologizes to Justin. They hash out their differences because, you know, they got into an altercation the week before at, um, what's the baby's name? At Montel's situation. So then Ken O'Neill and Mutton Chops arrive. O'Neill seems to have an issue that Mitch and Jason have Justin have squashed. Oh, Jesse's Jason. That child's name is not Jason. Justin and Mitch have squashed their beef. And he was like, How you just gonna have an issue with somebody and then y'all just squash it and everything is okay? Because that's how adults work. They don't. It's just how adults work. I don't know if you've, I don't know if you know or if you heard, but that's how adults, <laughs> what? Oh, Jesus. So, O'Neal seems to be on one because he's not getting the shade and the, and the fool la la that he ex clearly wanted out of this situation. So, Mitch immediately turns to, so, Mutton Chops turns to Mitch. And he was like, so how are you doing? Because they haven't seen each other since the altercation either. He's like, where your head is at? And just trying to figure out where your head is at. Mitch apologized. He's like, look, I just want to apologize for putting my hands on you. And whoop de woo and all this other stuff. And Mutton Chops is taken aback because, you know, not used to dealing with adults in an adult manner. And he's like, okay, well... If you can be a big enough of me to apologize and want to squash it, then I can squash it and I'll apologize to you too. They squash their beef. O'Neal, who refuses to let it not just let sleeping dogs lie and let it be what it is. His old punk, raggedy, messy ass set, turns around. He's like, okay, so you don't have to fight anymore and you don't have to press charges. So you just had to throw that in there. You couldn't just let it live and let it be what it is and let these two grown people just let this the fuck go. So you just had to, okay. I hope somebody punches you in your face. Um, It kind of gets almost riled up again, but Mitch is very calm. He says, listen, we've already hashed it out. We, we're done with it. We're good. If, if we happen to get into a fight again, he put his hands on me again. I'm pressing charges. As simple as that. Point blank period at the end. And that's that on that. You can't get mad at how somebody chooses to handle how you assault them. It's I just... I literally hate my neighbors. Okay. So... Um, they start talking around the table. O'Neal still ain't, is still, it was, now O'Neal is taking a back seat to think about what kind of salt he can throw into this next. And he's going to find some. 
hold on, we'll get to it. So they're going around the table talking about what they're doing. Um, Justin talks about some audition. He booked a modeling job. Um, Chance talks about his photo shoot that him and Ken did. Mitch said he uploaded a singing video to his thing. And then he started talking about, and O'Neal says, did you do that because of me? He was like, no, I did it for my fans. And then he turns around. He's like, oh, and I toured this venue that I want to book for the single release. He's like, no, no, let's go back to this. So you uploaded a video of you singing with no auto tune for me. I'm a professional singer. What? No, I did it for my fans. Oh, for your fans. Yeah, well, my, for my fans, what is, what is the issue? And, he, and then O'Neal is like, well, how many fans do you have? Uh, he, Mitch is like, what? It's like the same amount that you have. What are you talking about? And he was like, yeah, but my fans are real. Okay, sure. If he say so. He's like, well, I don't know why you just won't admit it that you put that video up because of me. Meanwhile, Ken and uh, Mutton Chops is over there giggling. And Mitch is genuinely confused. Like, what the? Like, I answered you the first time, and then I went to talk about something else, and you keep bringing this up. Why are we still here? O'Neal is a... Listen, this is not called Messy Bottom Theater for nothing. These children... Oh, then Montel shows up. Okay. So Montel shows up. He looks unkempt, unhygienic. He looks dirty. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the appearance that he gives. He gets ragged, dirty, I'm homeless tease. That's how he's dressed and that's what he's giving off. However, in his confession, baby's face is beat. His face is beat for Jehovah Jireh and the 12 disciples. I am absolutely here for this cleaned up, well-dressed, clean skin, clean shaven version of Montel. It's like, this is my, we, and during the show, we get into Montel. I just got off my job at the factory. In the confessionals, we got, oh, bitch, I had time today. That is the dichotomy of the two Montels that I'm getting, and I appreciate it. Um, so they're having a conversation and Montel sits down. He's like, Hey everybody, how are you? He's like, How are you doing? Everybody, da, 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 da. And he's like, um, they tell him that everybody has squashed anything. He's like, Okay, that's great. He's like, but Justin, I really want feel a way and I want to talk to you about it because I feel like you be doing a lot extra for no reason. And I feel like you just trying to get drama started and you keep popping off. And I really feel like it's unnecessary. And I would really appreciate it if you could calm it down. <coughs> Why is pink lemonade so strong? Jesus Christ. So as they're having a conversation, they seem to be having a civil conversation. They are, they're talking is a little elevated because it's a, clearly it's a loud restaurant. You can hear all the people, the murmuring and talking in the background, which would cause you to have, because Montel and just Justin are sitting so far away from each other. You would have to elevate your voice in order to be heard by the other person. So Spanky laid tired to lay ass come through. And he's like, I don't know what's happening. And why is Montel yelling at somebody? He's always yelling. There's a difference between yelling because you're arguing and yelling to be heard over a loud crowd in a restaurant. It just is. Um, it seems to me that as soon as Spanky saw, Justin saw Spanky was there, I guess to have his back, I guess the two of them would have tried to double team Montel. He pops off. Uh, the clear blue sky went from zero to 100. When all people were asking you to do was, we need you to calm down. You have popped off. Including this evening, 
at all three events that have been filmed for this show. You have gone from zero to 1,000 with a bunch of bullshit. And the bullshit ain't even got nothing to do with you. My nigga, what is you doing with your life? What's going on? What's happening? Yeah. So they go back and forth and back and forth. Huh. And so they take them outside the restaurant because they said, oh, we're loud in here and we're embarrassed and blase blue and blue blue. So Montel and, and Mutt and Chops go off and they're having a conversation. And O'Neal is fueling um, Justin and his fool, la la, giving him all, huh? You right, la la la. You're not right, you're wrong, and act like an adult. Um, when Spanky decides that not enough attention is being paid to him, so he takes um, Mitch off to have a conversation in the middle of another altercation. I keep biting the inside of my lip for some reason. Um, and they have a meaningless conversation about nothing. I don't even know what they were talking about. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. So then it cuts from that scene and it goes to a different scene with Mattel. And Mattel is working on his commentary for the ball scene. <sighs> Excuse me, because that's about as boring as this episode was. Um, they And you see him working on working on his craft which i appreciate because somebody got to show they come up because this and last but not least spanky proves to us why he needs to be selling hats because that hairline beloved baby is so far back and so like they could have took a magic marker instead of that beijing baby you spoke you're not supposed to okay i was scared if he sweated too hard all of that shit was gonna disappear and he always gonna be like that meme of that nigga who had that Beijing hair and and beard and went to the beach and all that shit was shedding by the time he left. Talk about shut up, bitch. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of. And if you were gonna get Beijing, why couldn't you get it further down so your forehead didn't start like right back here? Like bruh bruh, what's happening? Don't nobody love you? Didn't nobody tell you that wasn't a cute look? Why you let them producers shoot you from that angle? This whole is a shit show. It's an absolute shit show. I'm here for the shit show, but it's, that's exactly what this is. That's, listen, this is all I got for this. I still got to do other view stuff. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Whatever.